Hey everyone, Marine here for Learn Fun. Thank you so much for joining me on this new video. Today's story features Mr. and Mrs. Grinch. They are gathered around the Christmas tree, and Mr. Grinch decides to prank Mrs. Grinch and switches off and on and off and on the lights in the tree. So we are going to make this fun little scene. But first, let's check out the stamp and die sets we are going to need. So we have Yeti or Not for the cute Yetis, Christmas Before and Afters for the trees, A Creature Was Touring for the Candy Canes, Bar Humbug for the presents and the lights, Christmas Dreams for the bow, Beachy Christmas for the bubble decorations, and Would You Be Mine for the small bows. We also have the Magic Picture Changer die set, the largest stitched square stackable die, the largest outside in stitched square die, the Riley's ABC's alphabet to make the word Grinchmas, and finally my favorite paper for the holiday season from the Let It Shine paper pack. So every time I make a Magic Picture Changer card, I like to stamp and cut my images first. Cut my panels as well and lay everything on my work surface to get a general idea of the scene, but most of all to see how I need to divide my panel. So here we have an outside in stitched Stratmore Bristol Smooth Square Panel. Right on top of it I placed the frame die from the Magic Picture Changer die set and I aligned it with the bottom edge of my panel. I put the Christmas tree stamp inside the opening and a Yeti on both sides. Today I am going to keep my background pretty simple with a floor section on the lower part and a wallpaper section on the upper part. I am using a pencil to divide my piece of paper. I am going to place my panel on my silicone mat so that it doesn't move during the whole inking process. And I didn't want to use washi tape to divide my panel, so I am just going to use the edge of that bubble stencil to get a straight separation between my top and bottom sections. I am going to ink up the upper section first using salvage patina and pick of feathers oxidings. This is not a large section, so when I color a small section with inks, I like to apply the lightest color first to get a nice and even base. And next I add the darker color on the edges and I blend both colors using my blending tools back and forth to try and get a nice result. Now let's add a little bit of texture. I am first adding water droplets and I am going to dry my piece of paper using a paper towel. Now let's bring more contrast with this mix of peacock feathers oxide ink and water. I am using a small brush to make spatters on the paper and whenever I want to get tiny spatters I always tap my brush several times on the side first to make the bigger spatters and then I spatter above the paper. So now the top section is dry. I put my bubble stencil on top of it to protect it. And now I am going to color the bottom part using anti linen and vintage photo oxidings. And just like before, I am covering the whole section with my lightest color first. Next, I am adding a little bit of the darker color on the edges. And I am bringing my light color again to blend the colors. Now, texture. I am mixing a little bit of vintage photo oxide ink with water and I am using my small brush again to make spatters on my paper. Now I want to bring light and even more contrast to my background, so I am just going to mix white ink with water and spatter the whole panel with that mix. And thanks to the magic of the video, my panel is dry already. So I am going to cut my frame out of it. I want my pull tab to be at the top of my card. So first I am making sure that the notch on the die is at the top. I am going to line up the bottom edge of the die with the bottom edge of my panel. 
I am also centering the die. Some washi tape to keep everything in place. And after a run through my die cutting machine, this is what I end up with. The square is going to be useful, so don't throw it away. Before we move on to the interactive panels, we are going to stamp our greeting at the bottom of our frame. I placed it inside my Misty and created the word Grinchmas using letters from Riley's ABCs. I lined them up on the edge of my ruler and I am just going to bring the ruler where I want the word to be and pick up the letters with the door of my Misty tool. I am using Lanfon Clear Embossing Ink to stamp my word. Next, I am sprinkling white embossing powder on top of the ink and I am going to melt the powder using my heat gun. So we are done with the second part of our greeting. Now let's do the first part. I am putting my frame back in my Misty tool, putting the phrase have yourself a merry little Christmas above Grinchmas, but obviously we don't want to stamp the last word. So I am going to use washi tape to mask it, apply some black Versafine ink on the stem, remove the piece of washi tape, and then stamp the phrase on the frame. So let's set our frame aside to dry and let's work on our interactive panels using the dies from the Magic Picture Changer die set. I cut a large piece of Stratmore Bristol Smooth Cardstock for the pocket die and a smaller one for the moving piece die and I am first going to trace each window using a pencil. Next, the first image we want to see on our card is the Christmas tree all lit up. So we are going to stamp this image inside the pencil window on our big panel. The stamp is centered inside the window and I am stamping it several times to get a nice impression. Then the bare Christmas tree goes on the small panel. Just like the first tree, I am centering it inside the pencil window. And once again, I am stamping the image a few times to get those lines all dark and black. Next, I am going to create the same background behind each tree, the same background we did on our square panel. But first, we need to mask the images. I use the matching dies to cut those masks and I am just attaching them on top of the images. And to make sure that my masks are centered, I am putting my piece of paper against the light above my desk. This way I can see the stamped image behind the mask and then I know if it's centered or if I need to make adjustments. Next step, I am going to erase most of my pencil windows. I am only keeping the four corners of each. And next, we are going to add a background behind our trees. And to do that, we are going to use the square I told you not to throw away and use it as a guide. I am just centering the square between the four pencil corners. Next, I am sticking my bubble stencil following that guide. And I am going to use the same inks and add the same splatters as before to color around my trees.
So now my panels are all dry. I am going to color both trees using my alcohol markers using my favorite color palette this season, green, aqua, pink and red with some yellow accents. So I added highlights and details to the trees to make them pop even more. Now I am going to cut both panels using the interactive dies. I am centering the trees inside their window and taping the dies in place using washi tape. A quick run through my die cutting machine and there we have our panels. We need to do a few things before we assemble them. First, we need to fold that pocket panel in half right on the score line. And we also need to fold the two slim tabs we have on each side of the panel. I always like to use my bone folder to press really well and reinforce that fold. Next, I am going to add a strong double sided tape on those slim tabs, front and back, just like that. I am going to remove the backing papers of the inside and then fold the tabs. 
Now, one more step before assembling our panels. I like to add powder at the back of the pocket panel, along the tabs and also on the flaps in the center. I also like to use my bone folder to soften the edges of the moving panel. I find that doing the steps makes the mechanism work even better. So now we can finally assemble our panels. I am putting the moving panel inside the pocket panel, the pull tab into the slot, just like that. And next, I am going to put each of those little flaps into a small slot, one after the other. I am going to pull on the tab to interlock flaps and slots. I am also making sure that the moving panel is centered between the tabs. So now we can peel the backing papers and finally close our interactive pocket. And to finish our pocket, we just need to stick the frame on top of it. I added some slim double-sided tape at the back all along the four edges and I am going to line it up and attach it on the pocket. Off screen, I die cut another outside in stitched square panel. I am going to stick to it the remaining piece of my panel using 2mm foam squares. And then I'm going to tuck the pocket right where it belongs and stick it using 1mm foam squares. And our interactive panel is all finished, all done. We will add the decorative handle piece at the end, because now it's time to turn our cute yeti couple into a Grinch couple using, of course, green markers.
So now it's time to fill the panel and create our cute little scene. I am using 1mm foam squares to stick everything except for the bows that I attached using liquid glue. Now we are on the last steps. I cut my red and white base panel using the largest stitched square stackable die. I am sticking my panel on top using liquid glue. And off screen I will attach this whole piece on a white card base. And we still need to add the pull tab handle. I cut the main piece out of cilantro cardstock to match our green couple of course. And the arrow is red. And it looks like we are done here, the card is all finished. So it's time for Mr. Grinch to prank Mrs. Grinch. Time to play with the switch button, to turn on and off and on and off the lights in the Christmas tree. I hope that you like this ever so cute and fun card. Thank you so much for stopping by and for watching this video. Have a very nice day and see you next time. Bye.